God bless. This is Mark Anthony DeBello, your host for NFL Moneyball, brought to you by NFL Extended Strategic Principles, or NFL ESP, found on the web at nfl-esp.com. Again, I am your host, Mark Anthony DeBello. For more information on me and this program, you may go to my website, markanthonydebello.com, and click on the Sports tab. Today is Monday, December the 28th. The Monday night game is just wrapped with a Denver overtime victory over Cincinnati. We're in week 17 of the NFL season coming up. We just concluded week 16. This is going to be, as usual, a half an hour program. It is the last program of the regular season. I will do playoffs and then Super Bowl and then, I believe, a final end of the season review. Uh, Still blessed to be the most accurate voice you will hear. Again, I'm only hoping that you spread the word, and I'm appreciative of those who do listen uh, to this broadcast. Regrettably, as I noted last week, that the mainstream media is still unbelievably incorrect in their assessment of the games, whether that's from the perspective of the game's normally or straight up, if you will, or those who have a Vegas or Nevada perspective, and even those who offer their fantasy opinions. I respect that they have a job. I respect that they're getting paid well. What I don't respect is that they're getting overpaid to give inaccurate opinion rather than giving the truth. Most, I believe, are ungodly because if they knew God they would know the truth they would be more accurate and insightful they're not and it just irks me to no end that here I am begging to get a handful of people or more to listen on the internet and couldn't be spreading you know more I believe accurate or you know professionally predictive productive and prophetic opinions and nobody's paying me in a sense so it just it's the world system it's the way it goes with life and with everything um, but so be it but again I'm no God and if you know God and you ask God about football he will tell you the truth he's the most knowledgeable and the most accurate and again we focus on the P's here the prophetic the predictive and the productive and from the NFL ESP perspective we cover uh, the games from the four Uh, aspects of that which are the spiritual motivational X's and O's and then the strategic with our exclusive use of the power spread and our exclusive accurate power rankings Um, and again those are not that is not the spread quote unquote spread you hear about in Vegas they get their number from us um, but they alter it uh, and then the media alters it in the wrong direction usually and then you the public who invest in games you are 90% of the time incorrect so you move that number so again by the time that number is seen on game time however you know anybody in the media or a a team or players or any fan or investor will see it that number is inaccurate that's why from the NFL ESP perspective and our goal is to not only you know have a media platform and uh, you know broadcast more widely globally and uh, you know uh, be compensated in a just manner for it but to take the NFL ESP data and information especially the most undervalued and misunderstood number the power spread and helping coaches use it to make the most productive basic strategy decisions which again have been proven to increase the team's win production by at least 10 to 15 percent minimum which is upwards of you know two maybe even sometimes three games per NFL regular season uh, surely three if you get into the postseason. So anyway, having said that, I usually spend about the first five minutes speaking about various matters, and that's what's on my mind now, apart from 
uh, Chris Berman, who I've met once at the Bears training camp on ESPN, saying nobody predicted Washington to win the NFC East. That's incorrect, because if you listen back to week two or three after uh, we saw Dallas the first couple weeks, and then definitely after Tony Romo went down, we predicted the Redskins and actually had them second all season long anyway. And if you listen to last season's program, we were big Kirk Cousins fans uh, and said that they needed to get him in there instead of RG3, and that's happened. And then, you know, there's been a sort of evolution and the slow growth of that, and that's got Washington in the playoffs. And, again, so we did predict that, okay, Mr. Berman. So God bless. Um, so I'm going to, again, cover the games from the three perspectives of NFL ESP. Um, you know, when, as my father, I love him, would say strategery, okay? We're going to focus on the strategic there and then how the games, uh, you know, play out from a Nevada or Las Vegas perspective. And again, we believe in the integrity of the game. We believe people don't need to be investing, you know, or putting their money on these games, but it doesn't mean the data is any less valuable. It's ex extremely valuable. And then also as it relates to fantasy, because, you know, God bless him again, Matthew Barry, the quote-unquote fantasy, quote-unquote expert on ESPN. Again, I know we outperformed him again this week as we do every week, and I was actually going to, at the beginning of the year, put out a hundred thousand dollar challenge to him and I will do it at some point next year you can darn well bet on it because you know our fantasy information again is also also very accurate um, so we'll cover the games I'll integrate all three of those perspectives go over last week cover this week and then again moving forward uh, toward the playoffs so uh, let's take a look at the overall standings uh, as again this Monday night game is wrapped uh, and again, you only need to go to the sports blog. We encourage you to do that. If you click on the NFL-ESP.com page, you can click on blog. I haven't changed that blog since week two or three. The only thing I did alter, um, which I didn't put on the blog, um, I did some extra research information this week um, that I had been derelict in doing, uh, and I'll share that with you. It, it's basically the most up-to-date power rankings actually done before um, last week's games. Um, and I think they, they held true to what happened, uh, you know, to the games or regarding the outcomes in, in week 16. Um, so I'll go over that quickly. Um, and then, again, I'll, I'll go over the standings. And, they, and I hear, uh, actually, Keyshawn Johnson. Um, I respect him as being a wide receiver who played in the league. You know, I played wide receiver, didn't play in the league. But he looks at Carolina's win-loss record, for example, and says, oh, just because they still lost the, they lost the game to Atlanta, which we projected and predicted, and I'll get to that momentarily, um, they're still the best team in the NFL. Well, that couldn't be farther from the truth. We actually had them, and I'll go over these power rankings, uh, never ranked higher than fifth all season long, um, actually not really higher than eighth, and that's basically where they are now. Um, despite their, you know, really good one-loss record, I can't get in all the math of it. But again, they're the best team in the weakest two, uh, the weakest division, second weakest division in the NFL, and they play the weakest division in, in the NFL, which is the NFC East. So uh, to say that they're, you know, the best team because of their one-loss record, that's very deceptive, and and that's a lot of the things that the media does. They look at something like one-loss record or rankings for offense and defense with regards to total yardage and things like that, and they don't quite, you know, they don't know how to power you know, properly power rank the teams, and, and that's sort of our, you know, area of expertise. So let me go over those power rankings right now, and then I'll go over the standings, and we'll look forward to the NFL. So the, the most recent power rankings we did based on, um, you know, some new data, a, a new statistical um, algorithm I came up with is we have Denver ranked number one um, with Osweiler, though, at quarterback, not Peyton Manning. That show through tonight against Cincinnati. He played a great game uh, for the most part. Um, they should have actually won by a little bit more uh, than what they did win by, um, but they held Cincinnati under 20 points, which you heard me mention last week is a really good indicator of the strength of a team. We've got Pittsburgh ranked number two, even though they lost this week to Baltimore. Um, that was Baltimore's, as you heard me mention last week, quote-unquote Super Bowl. I didn't think Baltimore could actually win straight up, but we knew that that was too many points with regards to the Vegas spread, 13 was way too many points, or 11, whatever that spread was um, by their standard. Uh, we've got Arizona 3, um, only because the AFC is actually a notch better than the NFC, um, and Arizona showed their medal against Green Bay. We have Green Bay still ranked 4th, actually. They played the best team in the league, NFC, last week. Um, so then we've got our two NFC teams. 
Um, then we go back to the AFC for Kansas City and Seattle. Um, Kansas City, don't be mistaken, I saw Andy Reid doing celebrating, and I know, God bless him, he still has Taco Tuesdays, and I know he played, you know, did well in pump pass and kick when he was a kid, which I won at myself, but Andy Reid is not a top tier coach to win a Super Bowl. He proved that with the Eagles, so Kansas City cannot get to the AFC Championship. They definitely can't get to the AFC Super Bowl, uh, you know, the AFC rep to the Super Bowl. We have Seattle, um, who were not surprised, got upset by St. Louis. We mentioned St. Louis would keep that game close. They did, uh, but they're ranked sixth. Then we've got New England, seven, Carolina, eight. Um, not surprising. People, I you know, tried to put it out there wherever I could a little bit. Carolina was ranked eighth. I'm sure it got mocked. I'm sure I got laughed at. I, you know, and then Carolina goes and lose to Atlanta, which we projected and predicted. Like I said, Carolina is overrated. They've been overrated all year. Uh, they're a good team, don't get me wrong, but they're not even in the top five power ranking. And then we have Cincinnati, who played well tonight, but with Dalton at quarterback. Um, as he, I, I am impressed by the way A.J. McCarron did play tonight. Um, I give him props for that, but ultimately... Um, you know, they only need Dalton at quarterback. And then Minnesota. And now these bottom three teams, Minnesota's actually, um, as you heard me mention, I mean, you could almost shuffle these bottom teams here um, between, you know, six, seven, eight, nine. But again, so in order, basically Denver, and, in, and I did hear one coach say it's really, and you heard me say at the beginning of the year, this is one of the closest ranked divi- uh, power rankings we've had from one to ten as I've seen in a decade. Last year we clearly we had a clearly cut New England, Seattle one two, Baltimore three, and Baltimore very well could have gotten in the Super Bowl instead of a New England if you looked at the box score of that game and you heard me talk about that. Um, so Denver, Pittsburgh, Arizona, Green Bay, Kansas City, Seattle, New England, Carolina, Cincinnati, and Minnesota, and again with a, a leaning toward the AFC. Now as you look at the standings, New England won their division. We projected that when Brady got back in. I thought the Bills would do better. We did say that the Jets would do better. I regret to say I still don't think the Jets are going to make the playoffs as a wild card. Uh, Kansas City's already in, and I think Pittsburgh ends up uh, getting in there. I wouldn't be surprised, and we'll get into the projections, if Rex Ryan you know, with a great deal of vengeance, if, if, for lack of a better word, goes and beats the Jets. They did it last year with, you know, when the Jets beat Miami. Um, his final games, he gets his teams really motivated the last end of the season. And I know he's got a real, you know, hankering to beat the Jets, even though the Jets are definitely the better team. Um, we projected they perform better this season, you know, as you heard me say with Fitzpatrick at QB. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the Bills upset this week. Actually, I, I think they will. Um, you know, but having said that, um, then we go to the um, uh, AFC, I'm sorry, West. It's the Broncos and Chiefs. That's basically what we projected, followed by Oakland and San Diego. Um, since he, again, I think is overrated a little bit, um, Pittsburgh is actually a pretty darn good team, which I didn't know they'd be that good this year. I thought the Ravens would replace them, so I admit I was in error there. Um, um, but again, we, we corrected that after week two. Uh, here's a team that did surprise me, and, and this new data research showed this. Houston is much better than I, not much better, but definitely statistically better than I thought. I still thought Indianapolis would win this division. Um, and they still have a chance to do that. I don't think so anymore. There's too many permutations through what they need. And actually, I think Tennessee's going to have their super, quote unquote, Super Bowl against them next week and defeat Indy. And we'll get to that. Um, but uh, Houston, I, I guess I misunder. You know, again, I can't. If there's eight divisions, I'll be right of seven of the eight predictions at the top of the division uh, list. But I didn't think Houston would win that division. And you can hear me saying that as you know, recently as two, three weeks ago. But again, I, you know. They showed statistically they're a little bit, you know, better than I had thought. Um, getting to the NFC, and then we'll get to the playoffs. Let me just again say, um, I think you're going to see um, Denver against um, Pittsburgh in the finals there. I think New England is, is weakening now. Um, and actually, and you'll hear me get again to this week, I think Miami can have their Super Bowl against New England and upset them um, down in Miami. So... But again, clearly the two power-ranked leading teams are Pittsburgh and Denver, and I think they'll both get there. And I, I, again, I think Pittsburgh will be a wild card. Um, um, and then I would say, you know, watch out for – then it's just obviously Kansas City and New England. Um, 
uh, followed by Houston, uh, you know, and then, well, maybe Cincinnati's up. I'm sorry, Cincinnati's higher than, I, well, it's, it's pretty close between Cincinnati, KC, and New England. So, anyway, let's get to the NFC. Uh, I'll have surely, you know, I hate to have a clearer perspective in the last week because that's what all the media guys do. They tell you every week who they like and they change every week. So I'm not really going to do that. I'm going to just stick with who we had at the beginning of the year. So uh, let me get to the NFC as we're halfway through the program. Uh, Washington um, won that division, but they won't win. They'll get thumped in their first playoff game no matter who they play. Um, Arizona, Seattle, those were the two teams we projected out of the West. Um, uh, Green Bay and Minnesota are playing for the division title. Everybody saw Green Bay look bad, and Minnesota look good against the Giants, which we said they'd win by double digits. They won handily. Um, but I think you're going to see Green Bay, who had a really a real must-win against Minnesota a couple weeks back, um, beat them. And I think Minnesota, Green Bay will beat them again. They, you know, Green Bay performed their worst game of the season, basically, maybe looking ahead a step. Um, Aaron Rodgers played poorly. He probably won't play poorly two weeks in a row. Again, as I said, Minnesota plays well against bad teams, but against the top-tier teams, the playoff teams, they're not as highly ranked. But again, they are a good team. I do give the media who said at the beginning of the year Minnesota would do well. Um, I give them this is the one team they did get correct. Um, and Minnesota, again, has a really good defense. If they could ever get better than Teddy Bridgewater, they'd be a really good team, um, believe me. So... Uh, anyway, so, uh, again, that's what we see in the north. And in the south, as I mentioned, Carolina would lose to Atlanta straight up. They did. And I think, and you're going to hear me talk about the Carolina-Tampa game coming up, but do not be surprised, listen closely, if Tampa also beats Carolina. Okay? Actually, that's who I'm picking. Because I last game, the numbers was early in Jameis Winston, Jameis Winston's um, career, he is very much a risk-reward gunslinger type. He just wings it. If it gets, you know, if he's, I hate to use the word luck because we don't believe in luck. It's all God-ordained. But if if the throws get through there, he looks like a hero, just like Eli Manning did for the seasons. He looked really good. And when just by ran, sort of a random mathematical, you know, nature, if they don't, he throws interceptions. And that's what happened against Carolina the first time around. And, and But, you know, they didn't play as poorly as the the statistics showed, and that power spread is just egregiously way too much. So for those of you with a Nevada interest, we'll get to that game. Uh, you can bet Tampa, and I hate, no, I didn't even mean that. I used it, that sort of came out as an expression, because we don't even use the word B-E-T or, or the G word. But Tampa has, a you know, that's way too many points to give Tampa against Carolina. So, again, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Carolina lose this week and Arizona win the the the, the bye going all the way through. They are the best team in the NFC. They deserve to have the bye. Believe it or not, I've seen it happen more times than not. It actually plays out that way. Um, but, again, no disrespect to Carolina. They're just overrated. That's all there is to it, um, even at 14-1. and one. And I think they can actually lose, depending on the, the layout, uh, of the playoffs, their first round playoff game, um, because I can see Minnesota and Seattle both, be, are, I think, are highly more highly ranked than Carolina. Um, Minnesota isn't in the power rankings we did, but I can definitely see Minnesota upsetting Carolina. Seattle should definitely be is definitely power ranked higher than Carolina. So um, that's it for um, the standings. Let's go into last week. Um, I'll try to do it quickly because sometimes I guess I pat myself on the back too much. But, again, I give God all the glory and credit. Um, he knows more than anybody. Denver, we said, would beat Cincinnati. I thought they'd beat him by more um, in a close contest. Cincinnati got an early quick start. A lot of the media attention was on Denver, and that really showed motivationally against Cincinnati. Oakland-San Diego, we said, would be a toss-up. It was. San Diego covered with the Vegas version of their spread. We, we predicted that. We said Washington would score a lot against Philadelphia. Philadelphia's defense would break at the end of the season. They have ever since basically the Thanksgiving of the game before. They've let up like 35 points or something a game. Um, and we weren't surprised that Washington, you know, uh, handled Philadelphia and won the division with that. Uh, we mentioned that the Jets played closer against New England the first time around and that they had a real good chance to win this game in New York, and they did. So congratulations to the Jets. I, I fear that they're going to miss the playoffs. 
in which case they were going to really wish when I interviewed with them this year that they had NFL dash, you know, NFL ESP. Um, Houston against Tennessee, this game I had as a toss-up. I'm not surprised, again, after doing that data research that Houston won. Um, and again, without Mariota, Tennessee is just a, a much lesser team. Uh, Johnny Manziel, you know, I, I've already mentioned what a big fan I am of his, you know, countless times. Cleveland kept that game closer um, than most people expected. We said it would be a close game. Um, it, you know, it was in Kansas City, and, you know, the better team did win, but again, not surprisingly close. India, Miami, we picked India at the beginning of the week. Uh, I gave Miami some points, you know, quote unquote points in a sense of some, you know, extra credibility as the week went on, but Indy ended up winning that game. Actually, on a fantasy note, had Frank Gore as a running back and regret going off of him um, because our fantasy lineup, um, we had the top three wide receivers for the most part and tight end. Uh, we had Reed, Robinson, um, definitely had Julio Jones because you heard me predict Atlanta and say Julio Jones would have a big, would have a big game. And then Ashley went with a Jets wide receiver, um, Decker instead of Marshall should have stuck with Marshall uh, and then we had the other top wide receiver who I can't think of off the top of my head um, but if I look here I think I will come up with it and it was I said Robinson um, well I know the running backs we had well I'll get to the running backs um, oh Jordan Reed I mentioned at tight end so you know I think those were the top guys uh, at wide receiver um, and then I'll get to some other fantasy notes here. So let's go through some of the rest of the games. Um, because, again, I don't want to take too long, you know, uh, recapping. Detroit and San Francisco, we thought Detroit would defeat them. They did. Buffalo against Dallas, we liked Buffalo. I thought, actually, the Dallas QB, uh, Kellen Moore, would do better than he did. Um, he did not, but we liked Buffalo there. Chicago, Tampa, we said Chicago could very well and probably would upset Tampa. They did. Atlanta. We told you, me and God, I just knew I couldn't have laid it out any more accurately. Atlanta would beat Carolina, um, and they did uh, straight up, definitely with the spread, which was too inflated. Um, you know, Julio Jones, big game there. We projected that. A huge game, actually, in fantasy, and nobody, I think only 2% of people had them. So just goes to show you, and again, I heard the predictions and, and prognostications of the people on ESPN uh, that fantasy show, God bless them, okay? They're really not looking at the right data. Um, Baltimore against Pittsburgh. This one I have to admit, you know, and I know Baltimore very well. Uh, you've heard me mention, worked with, the, you know, their coaching staff. I'm surprised they beat Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh just got caught looking ahead. But I also know that the two, two, tur tur I'm sorry, two turnovers were the difference um, or Baltimore wouldn't have covered that game or even won that game um, statistically. It was just the turnovers that made the difference. Pittsburgh should have won by at least, you know, three or four. But, you know, upsets do happen and teams do play their Super Bowls. And I give Baltimore all the credit for still staying motivated. Jacksonville and New Orleans, we said this would be a close game. Again, this was another turnover-oriented game, um, high scoring as we projected. Um, St. Louis, we said we'd keep, keep it close against Seattle. I didn't think they could beat Seattle, but they did. So, uh, again, that was their Super Bowl. Arizona, we said, would beat Green Bay, and they did. Um, and then we said Minnesota would thump the Giants, and they did um, by you know, 32 points. We're not surprised by that. And, and now you're going to hear me talk about this week, and I think you're going to see a lot of, you know, again, you know, blessed to be very accurate in, in our prognostications and predictions. Um, and, and I'm going to try to cover all the games um, basically from all three perspectives um, here in the last six minutes or so uh, that we have. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, again, hopefully uh, you uh, profit from that in some way, um, even if I, you know, just go through it quickly. Buffalo and the Jets. Um, uh, Buffalo's at home here. Again, we think that, um, uh, hold on, I have to pull up another screen here real fast uh, from some of my exclusive data. Okay, uh, Jets are the better team. They're going to be playing. They're going to have motivation because you really got to watch at the end of the week season here last week who plays whom, uh, you know, with regards to the coaching, you know, who's resting, what quarterbacks are in, what quarterbacks are injured, you know, the playoff scenarios. You know, for the most part, though, all every NFL team wants to play to win. And especially you have to watch the teams who didn't play their Super Bowl last week to play their Super Bowl this week. 
our quote unquote Super Bowl, you know, and they love to bad teams knock teams out of the playoffs. Um, but this is one of those cases where that's what Buffalo can do. They can play to knock the Jets out of the playoffs. And I think you'll see Buffalo play motivated um, here. If I if the Jets could really, and I wrote them, they could really use NFL ESP. Um, and I can't get into all the details last week against New England, although they won, so they didn't necessarily need it. But again, they'll need it this week against Buffalo. Um, and and you would really want to make the playoffs and have that extra 10 to 15 percent productivity. Carolina and Tampa. You already heard me mention this. Tampa, I think, is going to upset Carolina. In Carolina, they'll definitely keep the game closer than what that listed power spread is. Um, New England, Miami. I think this is again um, a game where if New England rests players because they're really hurting, uh, Brady doesn't typically rest, but I can see this season them resting. You know, Coach Belichick resting him, and Miami playing their Super Bowl at home here. Um, you know, so NFL ESP isn't going to really matter so much, except if you're Miami, you just want to be really aggressive. Um, Baltimore and Cincy. I think Baltimore already played their Super Bowl. Cincy lost tonight. Um, they're, they're going to play a lot better, I think, at home. Cincinnati, they're definitely the better team. So if you're Baltimore, keep being aggressive. Keep experimenting, you know, whether that's another quarterback, whatever. Um, you got nothing to lose. I don't want to share everything that I shared with them um, in a private email, but I'll just say, you, you know, draft picks are highly, you know, very important. And if you're out of it, you really have no reason to win other than experiment. But you, I know you can't tell NFL players that, and I don't blame them. You always want to win. Atlanta and New Orleans, that's basically a toss-up game. Um, there, nobody's in the playoffs there, but I would lean toward Atlanta. Houston and Jacksonville, I wouldn't be surprised to see Jacksonville upset here. There's a, a point, you know, a, a quote-unquote Vegas spread discrepancy in that game. I would lean toward the points and take Jacksonville. Cleveland and Pittsburgh, that's way too many points to be giving Cleveland you know, double digit. Cleveland with Johnny football will cover that game, I believe. Pittsburgh should win, however, okay? Um, and it's a must win for Pittsburgh, I think, for the most part. Um, and they'll want to have some momentum going into the playoffs. Um, I, or I think they actually need to make the playoffs. So uh, they'll they'll definitely win there. Um, Kansas City's playing Oakland. Um, Depending on, I don't know if Kansas City is going to rest players, but I would take Oakland at some you know, extra points there. Tennessee, I think, is going to actually upset Indianapolis, um, although Indy's the better team. And you heard me say Indy should make the playoffs from the beginning of the year. But put it this way, I, would just, I can see Tennessee upsetting Indianapolis in that game. Washington-Dallas, this is one of your prototypical games, I think, where Washington rests players. They've got nothing to gain by winning, um, actually. And I think Coach Gruden will do that. And I think Dallas... You know, was going to want to win their final game at home. Garrett's uh, coach Garrett's on the hot seat. You know, if they really like him, which I think the players do, they'll want to play for him. Uh, that's a motivating factor you want to look at. Uh, the Bears are at home against Detroit. Detroit's actually the better team, um, unless you know I'm getting snookered here, which sometimes you do. Uh, you know, if you look at it from a uh, you know the analysts in Nevada, their perspective, when they take, make a team a, a one-point favorite, they're enticing you to take the underdog which in this case would be Detroit, because people are going to look and say, hey, geez, here's Detroit, they're getting points, uh, you know, or who's Chicago to lay points. But these guys in, in Las Vegas, they know their data. So if they put that number up like that, you might want to lean toward, and you can see this throughout the season, most of your one-point underdogs end up losing. Um, but on my sheet, I have Detroit winning that game. Um, so, you know... And I hate to say, I don't hate to say this, but many times I don't have the confidence, but I'm usually right more than what Las Vegas is. So I'll just go with Detroit that game. Giants are playing the Eagles. You will again see a triple, not a triple digit, a 21-point-plus win by the Giants, okay? They'll bounce back as much as I dislike the Giants. And when Ryan Nassib gets in there, he played well last week, he's going to light it up too against Philadelphia, okay? So... Uh, you know, if you want to take a, a wild fantasy pick, take Ryan Nassib at quarterback because they'll thump the Eagles. The Eagles will let up, you know, 35, 40, 50 points maybe to the Giants. And no, I'm not kidding. Uh, Green Bay and Minnesota I already talked about this game. This is really a great game. I think Green Bay will bounce back and win. Um, it's a toss-up game, though. Uh, Denver and San Diego. San Diego will play a little hard. I don't know about that power spread. Um, Denver, if it's a must-win, a lot depends on the playoff scenarios there as to what Denver does, if they rest players or not. 
Um, but Denver, we know, is the better team. San Diego, you're a seven and a half point underdog. Take a lot of chances, why don't you? Here's a game I think is is a, a moto or master of the obvious play. I think everybody's going to be playing St. Louis at San Francisco. Everybody was against San Francisco all season long, and they won the beginning of the year, first week against Minnesota. They had to listen to it all year long. I think you're going to see a lot of motivation with San Francisco and San Francisco win this game at home. And the final game on the card is the cards, Arizona against Seattle. Um, again, this is a lot of must-win scenario. They could both be resting players. You don't know. Uh, but Arizona is definitely the better team, and I think that Arizona should, you know, win that game. So, listen, I, I mentioned a lot there. I probably could have mentioned a lot more. I'm sorry, but we're out of time. Thank you to those of you this regular season who have listened. I know you've benefited, benefited from it, I'm certain. God bless you, love you, and appreciate you. Thank you for listening. This has been NFL Moneyball, brought to you by NFL ESP, found on the web at nfl-esp.com. I am your host, Mark Anthony DeBello. Thank you, and God bless you.